Let's move on to our last quarterback, Kirk Cousins. His current DLF AD is QB 21, another quarterback that I'm I'm ahead on here. He finishes a QB one in five of the last seven years. Those other two years is QB 13 and QB 19. Now we've got Kevin O'Connell in as the new head coach. He was the OC under Sean McVay the last year, so part of that system, which has been a pretty good system for offenses. Irv Smith coming back this year. Skyler, I'm going to jump right back to you. How do you feel about Kirk Cousins? Yeah, well, I was just talking about how with Derek Carr, I picked up all my shares when prices dipped past QB20, and Kirk Cousins is going as QB21. Fits right in there. Kirk Cousins has been the same thing as Derek Carr, except even better. As you mentioned, he's a QB1, almost a, a low QB1, that is, almost every single year. And even when he misses, it's middle and QB2. How is it QB21? I, I don't understand, right? With QBs, I think it's it's um, it's a little optimistic to look past like a three-year scope. Uh, and he'll be a starter in the NFL for at least another three years. So I don't see any reason he should be slipping all the way to QB21. Guys going ahead of him. Ahead of him is all all these, you know, second year guys. You got Lawrence Fields, uh, Zach Wilson, Mac Jones, and you know we talked. You can look at a video we have on our channel about those types of quarterbacks. The hit rate on those guys is like twenty to thirty percent. So you're taking a quarter, a young quarterback with a twenty to thirty percent hit rate over Kirk Cousins, who's been a QB one or, or middle in QB two every single season for the last what seven years or so. Um, just for what? Because they're younger? Uh, yeah, he, he's, he's 33. But as, as we mentioned, he's going to be a starter for at least another three years, right? He's got he's got Justin Jefferson, um, Adam Thielen, Dalvin Cook. Uh, the, the, he's got options all around him. Uh, the, the defense has been up and down. Even when it's down, you know, he could be playing catch up in games. I don't see any reason why Kirk Cousins should be falling to this price. And honestly, if I have a guy like, like a Trey Lance or something, it's not – ridiculous that you could get if somebody's got like a late first like a 110 111 to get like a 110 111 a 23 first and cousins for like a trey lance i think people who are bullish on lance will make that trade all day where there's there's no guarantee that trey lance ever has seasons as high as what kirk cousins has given you in the past and kirk cousins is doing this without running the football right so you're picking up two firsts on top of that cousins is just an ideal target this price is a little bit insulting to him. I think people disrespect who he is as a quarterback every single year. And this would qualify as one of those off seasons that said that are forgettable for some of these middle and QB twos, right? The reason I'm not buying a guy like Mac Jones at cost is because um, if his ceiling is what we're projecting is Derek Carr or Kirk Cousins, what we're hoping for, why am I paying, you know, QB 15 price tag? Uh, I will sell. I will take a right. guy with Kirk Cousins, take the production now, and I'll buy back in on a guy with Mac Jones in three or four years when he's a middle in QB2 who's forgotten about and his ADP dips to where Cousins is now. So uh, Cousins is is an absolute perfect target in, in the startup drafts around what you said with Carr, like that round six, seven. I mean, if you told me to paint my, my ideal startup, right, I would either – take a first round QB lock in a top five guy. And then I get a Kirk cousins or a Derek Carr in round seven, or if I just faded QB entirely and then end up with cousins and Carr around six and seven, I get five studs before them. That team's going to compete to win right away. And for another three years, I think people look at them like they're like they're this older group of QBs. They're, they're young thirties. I mean, there's three to five more years of starting production barring injury for these players. Um, so Kirk Cousins, I'm all over his current price. So if anything, I'm buying, I guess you could say, at that price tag. Yeah, you're absolutely right. The the the, the disrespect for Kirk Cousins is real, especially when you look at this ADP of a guy who's consistently a QB1 or high-end QB2. And then you mentioned the age, 33 years old. But we have to realize that 33 is nothing for QBs at this point. They're playing well into their late 30s in their prime, putting up big numbers. It's just not something to worry about anymore when they reach, reach that age. Tony, what do you think about Cousins? Well, I'll try not to repeat anything that Skyler said, but like I do agree with him that he's just this guy that always falls every year. For God knows what reason, considering what he said, the five out of the last seven years, a QB one, like that's that ADP of QB 21 is like, it's outrageous considering those stats. And 
he's one of those guys that year in year out his real life value always affects his fantasy value but it's like why what are we doing here okay i like even in redraft i try to get him every year because everyone passes on him till late in the draft it's like that i'm gonna get qb1 or qb2 numbers almost weekly uh so yeah for for that cute that adp i'm trying to target him anywhere i literally have a dynasty team that is car um cousins and burrow and i'm like I'm set at quarterback for the next three to five years, like he said, like Skyler said. So it's like I love that group. I can go focus on every other position yeah. for the next three to five years. Maybe even like it's just like I'm I'm all over Kirk Cousins if it comes to a good trade and if I can, you know, sell someone like a Trevor Lawrence and get picks with Cousins. I, I'm in on that. 